the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Uh, what is up, everyone? We got breaking news. Lakin Tomlinson has agreed to terms with the Jets. I'm going to give you the terms here. Uh, reported by several um, different, but this one comes from Ian Rappaport. The Jets are signing guard Lakin Tomlinson to a three-year deal reportedly worth $40 million, max value of a $41.2 million, $27 million of that guaranteed. So Lakin Tomlinson goes out and gets the big contract. Um, this is something that we have been talking about for a while because uh, Lakin's value was very much up there, and now he gets broke off. I mean, uh, almost over $13 million a year, something San Francisco really just couldn't uh, keep up with. Uh, so now we start talking about the possibilities of what that means after Lakin Tomlinson leaves. Um, this is something we felt was a possibility, so we've been talking for a few weeks now that um, there is a possibility for... You know, somebody else to step up. Could it be Aaron Banks this time? Will the 49ers, you know, go with a Tom Compton or a Daniel Brunskill route? Uh, affordable options there. Could Jalen Moore be ready? I think there's a lot of questions now uh, surrounding the 49ers interior offensive line. But the way Kyle Shanahan operates, there was absolutely no way that they were going to pay a interior offensive lineman 13 plus million a season. That just wasn't going to happen. And uh, what is up, everyone? Uh, say what's up to Jay Hill. Uh, Megan in the chat. Jan, hello, how are you doing? Um, Jay Ellie, of course, always talking about the bag. It is good for Lakin Tomlinson. Let's be honest. Lakin Tomlinson is one of those good guys uh, that you really want to see, um, you know, get get what he deserves. And these players, they deserve this money. And he got broke off in a big way. But now the 49ers uh, have to make other decisions. So there's going to be a an effect from this. Um, do the four, Are the 49ers all in on other players? Is, is that what's going on? It could be. It could be that they just didn't value interior offensive line the same way a team like the Jets with, you know, a lot of available cap space um, did. This was the talk was Lakin Tomlinson to the Bengals. Well, they went Alex Kappa, so that wasn't going to happen. Um, the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins didn't go that route, but even though they need offensive linemen in a big way. And then you also got now the Jets. And the Jets went ahead and make the move. I think every time a 49ers have a free agent, automatically, Jets... Dolphins, right? Anyone that runs a similar system. What is up, Jan? Uh, good morning to you as well. Glad you uh, stopped by. So, um, yeah, it, and Megan brings up, obviously, the ring isn't important to him. This is one of those things where sometimes, well, number one, players are more inclined to, especially at his age, get the big contract. He needs the big contract. It's going to help his family. He has aspirations of doing a lot of things in Africa and stuff like that. Um, where he wants to do some of that work. So he's, he wants to get into medical and all that. So, um, no, it, John Paul, it doesn't give us any cap relief. All it does is mean that the available money that you're going to spend on other free agents uh, won't be going to Lake and Tomlinson. So somebody like Aaron Banks, for instance, if they decided he was going to be the starter, he's making around 960000 this year. So Lake and Tomlinson, you were thinking you, were, you could possibly have to pay $10 million. Now it's only going to be that. So... It's a lot cheaper option. I fully expect them to make sure they have other veterans along the way. So Tom Compton, Daniel Brunskill are going to be guys I'm sure they look to bring back um, to ensure some sort of a competition between Banks and and them. So this is going to be something that we're going to watch. I don't believe they're going to go for another big name offensive lineman. They're, most of the interior guys are already off the board. Ryan Jensen returned to Tampa Bay. Um, Alex Kappa, you know, he signed with... Uh, I don't remember who it was. I just went blank. Um, I know he signed earlier today. So, oh, the Bengals. Yeah, because the Bengals also got Ted Karras as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that, you know, there are players that are are moving in the interior offensive line. I just can't believe, even though I, I think we all value Tomlinson, I just can't believe he got $13 million. I was thinking it was more like the 10, what Kappa got. But, hey, he he's out there. He had a better PFF score. Um, so that's pretty impressive. So, yeah, Jay Ellie, the, the 49ers are about 9 million over the cap right now. So the none of that matters right now in this period. What matters is when we get to, you know, the, the 1 p.m. Pacific or 4 Eastern time on Wednesday, the top 51 contracts need to not be over the salary cap. So 
Um, this is something that they're going to have to continue to work on. I would expect if Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't get moved, then you're probably going to see them restructure, um, extend, and free up some calorie, salary cap space that way. Of course, the 49ers are linked to a bunch of different people. So um, let's see. Let's see what we got going on here. I'm going to kind of try to read everyone's comments. So if you're leaving comments or questions, um, go ahead and do that, and I'm going to try to check them out. So, um, Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I see what Rome is talking about. I seen Megan comment to him about nobody wanting Jimmy. I think that is a fear amongst 49er fans. One thing I brought up on Twitter, and you guys can let me know how you feel about this um, before I go back to Lakin, is with Jimmy Garoppolo, it, it, you also got to feel that there's pressure on the Colts because they have went through, this would be their fifth quarterback in five years. You've seen the things that their players are saying on Twitter, uh, the responses they're having. They want to get a quarterback that they know they can trust. Are you really going to turn to those guys and say one of these you know, guys in the draft is going to be that guy? Can R Frank Reich you know, and Chris Ballard really survive a rookie quarterback? Uh, I don't think so. By the time that rookie quarterback was ready to help that team get somewhere, they could be out of a job and it would be the the next you know regime's uh, opportunity with that quarterback. So they're going to want to go veteran quarterback. So your options now that Trubisky's off the board, is it Jimmy Garoppolo or is it like Jameis Winston? Uh, can you really look at your, your fan base and say, Jameis has proven that he's a winner in this league? You also couple that with Chris Ballard talking about he wants a quarterback that's willing to take the easy throws. That's Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think that Jimmy's still in the mix for the Colts. I think both both of them are posturing about the you know what they're going to give up. The 49ers obviously want two twos for Jimmy Garoppolo. And I believe after what the Colts got for Carson Wentz, they are able to ask for that. But anyways, anyways, back to um, what everyone is saying. Let's see. Um, they're saying, okay, Rome is still saying he doesn't have any uh, value. But Lakin Tomlinson, guys, what do you guys feel about Lakin moving on? Um, is this disappointing? Uh, I think a lot of people really wanted, you know, Lake and Tomlinson to come back, but he's not coming back. But what does that mean um, for this interior offensive line? Are you guys okay with Aaron Banks being the starting left guard? Are you okay with it being Jalen Moore? Or do we need to make another move now? This is this something we need to address in the draft? Um, I'm curious what everyone is thinking about that because this is a move um, that I, I think didn't surprise me because I did believe that Lake and Tomlinson was going to get you know, maybe more money on the open market than the 49ers were going to value him at, him at. I believe they didn't want to pay him over eight to nine million dollars and he gets 13. So big ups to him for getting that. Yeah, I think, Jan, uh, a lot of people feel the same way. A bit disappointed. This was for a lot of people, you know, priority one, making sure you keep a good offensive line around Trey Lance. Um, but the 49ers, you know, they did go in on offensive line last year with Jalen Moore and, of course, Aaron Banks, who was the big you know, topic of conversation was does he fit the scheme? He's been in the he's been in the facility all off season working out, really trying to get better. And I I think that you know he's he's gonna be vastly better. He got better during the season from what we saw in training camp where he was getting I mean owned consistently by Maurice Hurst and some of those guys. Um, it seemed like he was getting better as the season went on. He became part of the active roster as the season progressed, and it felt like the team was kind of being encouraged about his progression. They had asked him to lose a bit, little bit of weight, and I'm sure that's what he's working on. So they were going to see Aaron Banks, you know, kind of drop some weight, maybe come in around 320 pounds. Uh, he'll be more more mobile, and really what he had to work on was uh, his his movement. So Aaron Banks, I mean, I think right now would be the guy that most would think is going to be that guy, is going to be that, that starting left guard. I mean, he played left guard at Notre Dame, um, so that makes the most sense. Uh, yeah, I think John Paul has this saying it disappointed, but expected signing cheap serviceable vet guard in the mix with banks, etc. Um, John Paul, do you think that it's going to be Tom Compton, Daniel Brunskill? Uh, I, I, do you feel comfortable with the 49ers rolling with Brunskill, uh, you know, and Tom Compton, or do they need to make another move? And if there is a move, you know, who you got? Uh, I'm, I'm interested in that. So, um, because there is a lot of conversations around this. Uh, BV50 says, hey, let's draft an O-lineman in the middle round. Draft is rich in O-lineman. It is. You know, this is one of those ones. What's up, Frank? How's it going? Uh, aloha to you as well. Um, yeah, so I, I think there's going to be options, of course. I think now offensive line becomes, you know, more of a target for the 49ers. They did address it in the in last year's draft. They'll probably have to address it again. Uh, the Colton McKivitt signing. So Colton McKivitt is in the mix, of course. So just looking at examining who they got on the roster right now, we know that the ones we got Aaron Banks, 
We got Jalen Moore. We got Colton McKivitz. Of course, um, they did sign Jake Brendel. He has guard potential as well. I think those are the main guys. Then restricted free agent, we have Daniel Brunskill. More than likely, they'll bring him back. Uh, and I think Tom Compton will be a target because he'll be a lot cheaper, you know, two, three million dollars. That might be something they're interested in doing as well. So I think now your offensive line gets more of a, you get an idea of how it's going to be constituted. They do continue their, you know, the, the way they handle business of paying the left tackle a lot of money. They're paying Mike McGlinchey a decent amount of money at right tackle. And then the center at Alex Mack at 6.5, they do not value the offensive guards enough to pay them, you know, 10 plus million dollars. Um, so I see Jan saying, get Cole Strange. Watched a lot of film on Cole Strange. The key, the interesting thing about Cole Strange at the Senior Bowl was it was like good rep, great rep, terrible rep. Good rep, great rep, terrible rep. Uh, and I think that he, he showed a lot more strength when he got into the combine and he did his bench press. And we're just talking upper body strength, but he showed more strength than I kind of expected. Um, but if he's a guy that consistently anchor, I think he is a guy you could draft in the middle rounds, you know, fourth, fifth round, and then develop him if he's there. I don't know what his stock is going to do over the next several weeks. Uh, if his stock, you know, continues to rise, they might have to go after him earlier. But putting him in the internal, uh, interior offensive line as a backup that could develop into a starter, you know, down the road, I, I think is a good move because they will eventually have to move off Alex Mack. And what that center is going to look like, I don't know. I think most of us thought they were going to address the center position last year. So, um, EJ Hunter is not happy about this front office. Says, yo, this front office is clueless. You know, how many people feel that? How many feel that the 49ers just aren't making the moves? You know, um, EJ Hunter, do you think the 49ers should have re-signed Lake and Tomlinson? It, it's it's a big question. I don't know. Um, I, I I had always put in, if you watched any of our videos before, I'd always put the value on Lake and Tomlinson around $9 million. Um, when Alex Kappa got $10 million, I thought, okay, maybe he's going to, that's the, that's the line. Like, that's, that's kind of the contract that he's going to get. However, as soon as the contract details came out and it's 13 plus million dollars for Lake and Tomlinson, it was like, yeah, the 49ers couldn't realistically match that and still be able to keep, you know, the defensive players. Plus, I mean, all the talk of them building an offense of weapons around Trey Lance, you're not going to be able to spend that much money there. So you have to find other ways to do it. One of the ways is draft and develop. So you're hoping that they've developed Aaron Banks enough, you know, it developed Jalen Moore enough to be able to compete. Uh, my thought process was that coming out of training camp that maybe those two guys were slated to be guards eventually. We'll see. Um, okay, let's see. 427. John Lynch is not a good GM. Get Jimmy off the books already. I'm pissed off with Lynch. A lot of people getting upset that Jimmy Garoppolo is still on, on you know, on contract and with the team on the roster. I think a lot of people want that money freed up. The key is, is I even though they don't need the money freed up right now, uh, they need it freed up on Wednesday. You know, at at one p.m. Pacific time, four Eastern. That is when they need the money freed up. So coming to an agreement over the next, you know, couple days, not even what like thirty six hours or so, is something the 49ers really need to do. Uh, if they do that, then yeah, they're going to know what money they have. I believe you're going to start hearing about restructures and extensions here pretty soon, um, as they try to free up cap space. You know, to make these moves that they want to make. Um, you know, you've got, of course, Eric Arm said they can restructure and save nearly $9 million. They got Jimmy Ward that can extend and save nearly $5 million. Um, they've got, of course, Samson Ebicom they could extend and save money. And, and George Kittle, they can, if they restructure him, they save over $7 million. Those are players also that are kind of team first. So that wouldn't be surprising. So one thing I'm going to ask before I move on is to everyone out there now, we know they want to you want them to trade Jimmy Garoppolo, but what is now your number one option free agent? Who do you want? Is it somebody from outside the team? Is it one of the current 49ers? Who do you want them to bring back? Um, do they? Do you want DJ Jones back, Arden Key, or do you want them to go get a Stephon Gilmore or Chandler Jones? Do you want them to spend big money? Um, let us know because uh, I, I would like to have that conversation right now. Yeah, John Paul says, I love the fact that we are looking at speed wide receivers, returners, corners, much needed i i think so i think that you know the fact that you're hearing about them looking at valdez scantling um you know looking at jakeem grant who we've been bringing up in some of the receiver videos it, it does show that they're looking for somebody to help take the top off the defense uh for trey lance uh, trey lance's skill set is so much different than jimmy garoppolo uh, he's going to want to push the ball down the field and so you now you have that capability with that big arm so that's something they're going to do 
They will have to address the interior offensive line because you have to make sure the poor kid has time. Even though he's athletic and he's going to be able to move the pocket, he's going to be able to extend plays, you still need to get those guys you know, in there. So this is a, a big move. If Banks is ready, then this is mute, right? I mean, now you just went from, yeah, Lakin Tomlinson was solid for five years for the 49ers, but with him moving on, if Aaron Banks is ready to roll, you're going to save a lot of money. Uh, the difference of almost $12 million that you can use in other areas. You know, and if you're able to bring back multiple players or bring in a big high price free agent because of it, um, then it serves you. So it, it was all about value of position. And the 49ers interior offensive line, even though they liked Lake and Tomlinson, there was no way they were going to put that value on there. Um, so yeah, 420, uh, 420, no problem, man. I'm I'm really glad that you uh, are on the on the chat. Rome the upsetter, Chandler Jones. Yeah, I think Chandler Jones, this is something I talked about in the the preview video that we put out this morning is you know, with the value that PFF had kind of put, um, I mean, now their values are looking like they're actually under because of what Lake and Tomlinson got. But you've seen DJ Jones around $8 million. You've seen Arden Key at $6.5 million. So $14.5 million. And then they got Chandler Jones valued at $15 million. So the question is, would you rather go with Chandler Jones at a $15 plus million or with DJ Jones and Arden Key? I thought that was something interesting. Um, Jay Hill says Jones, Jackson, or Gilmore. Um, Jay Hill, I did see a tweet that came out. Uh, I don't remember who it was from exactly, but it was a blue mark that said that the 49ers and Raiders had reached out to Stephon Gilmore to gauge his interest. I believe with the 49ers, it's, it's all about money. I think they would bring in a high price cornerback. I think they would bring in an edge rusher like Chandler Jones. I think it all depends on the money and how they can make it work. Um, so, uh, Frank says Chandler Jones would catapult the D line, especially with the, the rotation kick ass. I agree. You put Chandler Jones opposite of Nick Bosa, that's going to create so many opportunities on the interior. You have Samson Ebicom and, Arden, uh, and uh, Eric Armstead in obvious pass-down situations, rough. <laughs> that's, that's pretty rough to handle. You know, and I, I know a lot of people have had the questions about Javon Kinlaw, and if you're losing DJ Jones, uh, then the questions around Kinlaw are legitimate because then now he has to play first and second down. He has to be the one to help stop the run. So Chandler Jones would be cool. Uh, Jan says if they don't get a corner... Uh, get Jones to bolster up the rush. Him opposite of Bosa would be awesome. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, SL Million says, not tripping. They need to trade Jimmy. That's all. Um, yeah, if you go on 49ers Twitter right now, that's what it's about. It's about trading Jimmy Garoppolo. I think everyone is is really wanting that move to happen. I mean, I'm one of them. I'm just sitting back and waiting because I do believe, um, even though it appears the 49ers are losing leverage, I'm going to wait and see what they end up getting out of this. You know, you had John Middlecoff come out and say that he had heard they've been offered a two. If they've been offered a two, it's not like somebody's going to be willing to give you give a two and then say, no, you know what? I'm going to sign Mitchell Trubisky. Um, that's that's not what happened. So I'm thinking it's the Colts. I've always thought it's the Colts, but they can sit there and wait while Deshaun Watson makes his little trip around in the next 48 hours uh, between the New Orleans Saints, the Carolina Panthers to decide where he's going to go. And once that domino falls, one of them is going to be highly desperate because both of them have been trying to free up cap space at a high level, if the Saints were to lose out on Deshaun Watson and Carolina gets him, the Saints would probably go with Jameis Winston. Then the Colts will be left there with Jimmy Garoppolo because I don't think they want to go Marcus Mariota as a starter. I don't think they can turn to their, you know, to their uh, players and turn to their fans and say, oh, we, we just got you Marcus Mariota. I don't think anyone's going to feel good about that. Uh, but if you say, hey, I got Jimmy Garoppolo, he's been to two NFC Championship games, it might help a little bit. So I think that's something that's still going to come. Yeah, and uh, Gary says, you know, Ebu Bomb is coming along. I think he is too. Um, so that's a possibility. Jay Hill is saying Gilmore three for 24, Chandler three for 36. It, he wants to win, maybe. Um, Megan says, Ant, still any interest in Wagner? I think there is. Uh, you know, I, I think until uh, there's, until it, he signs with somebody else, I think the 49ers are going to keep their eye on it. You know, you really are gauging what these guys want to do. That's why you reach out to them. You see where their number's at? Because you don't know what their market's going to ultimately be. Some of these players that are getting older, they want to make the money, but it's not about making the top end money all the time. For some of them, it's about competing and winning football games and winning a championship late in their career. So you you gauge that, you know, and if all of a sudden you're like, you know what, we're in the running for this, then you make a push. So I think they're waiting to see what his market's going to be. The fact that he didn't sign before free, you know, the free agent tampering period started means that maybe the market isn't what he thought or he's just trying to decide. But usually when a player gets cut like that before free agency, they like to go out there and get their money right away because they're the most valuable guy out there. They can actually start negotiating with everyone. 
Um, so Jay Hill says Christian Kirk to Jacksonville. So Arizona gets weakened a little bit there. So that's nice. Um, so uh, it, Luke Luna says the Eagles in Seattle will push for Deshaun Watson as well. That's if they get them, that will that will leave the Jimmy Garoppolo thing wide open, won't it? So that would be kind of nice. Um, all right, Frank, have a good day at work. Uh, do what you got to do. Um, EJ Hunter says Brunskill was getting blown up. Still doesn't solve a right guard problem. You're probably right. You know, I mean, that Brunskill was was struggling at times to anchor down, except against Aaron Donald. Strangely, um, they had to move Aaron Donald over onto Lake and Tomlinson. So. You're right. I think it it doesn't solve the problem from a upgrade standpoint. You know what you're going to get from Daniel Brunskill. You're going to get a a pretty good run blocker who is average against the pass when he goes against a powerful defensive lineman. He can't anchor anchor down as well, so he gets pushed back into the quarterback. That's not something that's ideal. I think the only thing you got going for us is you had to put a value, right? What was going to be the value? Was it going to be oh yeah, we're going to we're going to pay 13 million dollars for Lake and Tomlinson or are we going to just roll with you know what we know? I think they just chose cheaper options because the value was just not there. BB50 says, Ant, which player would you sign? Um, an all-pro DB or an all-pro edge rusher? I'm I'm going all-pro edge rusher. I'm going all-pro edge rusher. I saw what you know what could happen with the guys we had last year with Mosley, with Ombre Thomas. I know Ombre Thomas needs to improve some, but I think you could also bring back some more middle of the the road. You know, a Charverius Moore, for instance, or Charverius Ward, I'm sorry. Um, guys like that, that you could upgrade. A DJ Reed, upgrade the cornerback position and then still get that guy. So it all depends on how much money you're willing to spend. Now, I'm a huge fan of Stephon Gilmore. So if they win Gilmore, I'm not complaining. But I would rather have a Chandler Jones, for instance, over Stephon Gilmore because I think that pass rush would just be so elite. There wouldn't be time. I think the 49ers, though, are looking to go in the route of a a big time corner because when you look at the Los Angeles Rams, the weapons that they have, uh, you're going to have Robert Woods back. You have probably going to have Odell Beckham Jr. Again, and then Cooper cup. I mean, that's nasty. So if you could get a corner on the outside, that could take one of them away. The way you're able to play defense is a little bit different. Um, so I think that's one thing they'll be looking to do, but can they afford to make like a big move? Maybe this not signing, Lake and Tomlinson is actually a, you know, a kind of a signal of what they're going to do. Maybe they are going to put more focus on defense. Uh, maybe they will go Gilmore and Jones, or they'll they'll make a, you know, a DJ Reed and a Jones, something of that nature. I, I am curious. So that's going to be something to watch because it looks like the 49ers interior offensive line is about to be extremely cheap uh, because Aaron Banks, Jalen Moore are going to be in the running, probably um, Colton McKivitz. And then if they re-sign Tom Compton, and Daniel Brunskill. And I think Brunskill will come back. He's too flexible. He has too much versatility to play any position on the offensive line. So I think those things are important. Um, Rome just said, yeah, secondary isn't as bad as people think. I think so. And I think Ombre Thomas is going to develop. I think that depending on what happens also with Jason Verrett, you know, I know Jason Verrett gets hurt a lot, but he does have a lot of flexibility there. Um, he can play on the outside. He can play, you know, on the inside. And I think everyone saw what happened in 2020. He played at a very high level with really, no offensive line, I mean, no defensive line in front of him. Bosa, uh, you know, forward, everyone's hurt. So I, I think that's that's what's going on. Um, Jan says, would you bring back Tart? Yes, I would. Uh, looking at the safety market, I don't think they can get a Tyron Matthew. You know, we've seen Quad uh, Quadri Diggs just get a huge contract from Seattle, over $10 million a year. I don't think you can afford to pay one of these guys big money. So minus one of them saying, you know what, I'm going to come in for a really cheap deal to try to win. No, I, I wouldn't do that. I would definitely, you know, go with a Jaquiski Tart who is kind of what you know. I think you're looking for Tarvarius Moore um, coming off the Achilles to compete at the safety position. You know, you you know, you know drafted Talano Hufanga. So, I mean, if you feel Hufanga can take that next step, maybe you go a cheaper route than Tart. Um, if you go back and, and check out the safety video, we put out some, some guys like Tracy Walker and some other guys that are playing for some teams that maybe you don't know. You know, we talked about um, Justin Reed. They're all possibilities for the 49ers if they're looking for a guy with huge upside that maybe is a little bit cheaper. So I think Tart is going to test the free agent market. I don't know, you know, what kind of market that's going to look like. You always worry about, you know, the Jets or somebody like that that runs a similar defense deciding that he's an option. Yeah, I mean, SL Million, that might be a way, right? Honestly, the best help for Trey is a great defense. That I mean, that has proven to be a, a 49ers way of handling business. You know, they have proven to go that way, so... Um, I think I think that is that is something that we have to you know keep in mind is that 
building through a great defense has worked for the 49ers before. I mean, they did hold the Rams to 20 points, you know, in the NFC Championship game. So they got that going. Um, Jay Hill says, oh, why is the answer all pro corner? Okay, it, yeah, it might not be. Uh, that's definitely not the way that John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan do things. I mean, we've seen that. They, they missed on Solomon Thomas, uh, but they, you know, of course, Nick Bosa was an out-of-the-park hit, but um, he everyone kind of knew he was a can't-miss prospect, right? Um, and then, you know, when you got, they traded for D Ford, that did unlock some things. I know people talk about, you know, Ford being, you know, not being out there, and that's huge. So they do need to get a guy opposite of Nick Bosa, but I think they can do that. Um, yeah, Sir Juju says it's Banks time. It, that's what it appears to, Juju. It looks like they're going to go that way. We've been kind of talking about this in our videos the last couple weeks, is that, you know, with Lake and Thompson possibly being priced out, it might just be that you do that. So, um, okay, Hassan Reddick to the to the Eagles. So, Hassan Reddick's going to be going that way. So, one of the pass rushers is off the board. Reddick going ahead and getting a big deal, I'm sure. Uh, Jay Hill says, hey, Ant, I have a question for you. Would you move one of our backers? It seems like... One of three levels of backers isn't the most important. It all depends on the money. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I think they'll put us, as of right now, depending on what they would do, for instance, with, you know, if a Bobby Wagner was still in the picture. But if they're just going Aziz Alshire, I think they'll put a second round tender on Aziz Alshire. And if they do, then, you know, at worst, he would come back for 3.9. But and if you're not improving the room, you're at least keeping that room together for one more year. I think that they would like to get either Alshire or. Greenlaw under contract for an extension. So they have a running mate to roll with, you know, Fred Warner for the next, uh, you know, several years. Because I think one thing to watch, and this is something I don't know, you know, how many people are, have paid attention to it, is it seems like Fred Warner played so much better when Dre Greenlaw was in the lineup than he did with Aziz. I don't know if it's what he's been asked to do or tasked to do, but I think it's something that we need to, uh, you know, to, to keep in mind. So, uh, 427 says Lynch made some high profile mistakes with early draft picks and bad contract. If Lynch messes up the season, head can roll. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, there's there's gonna be, you know, there's a possibility. I think it's more it's more locked into Trey Lance, though. Uh if Trey Lance plays fantastic this season, the 49ers are gonna go a long way. And if they go a long way, that's that's security for John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. I think they're more tethered to the success of Trey Lance than they are some of these other guys. I think they would like to hit on all these guys because if they do, it really helps their roster. But I don't think they're as tethered to, you know, in a Banks or a Trey Sermon um, as they are to a Trey Lance. Trey Lance has to be the one that, that plays at a, a big level. I think hitting on Bosa was big because he had the Solomon Thomas thing. So I think that I think have, hitting on Banks and more would be good for the Niners, good for Lynch and the scouting department. But I don't think it's as necessary as hitting on Trey. Um, that's just what I think. Um... Okay, so uh, Luke Luna says, uh, or hello, Gilmore, but hey, let, let Key go. Um, D-line go bring in a guy like Chandler or Gilmore. Uh, you'd think that they'd be better to get after it. Yeah, so I, I think that's a possibility, you know. Um, sorry, guys, my phone fell off my my phone fell off my uh, lap. I'm trying to keep up on all the information that's coming along the way. Um, but yeah, I think that there's, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Kyle Shannon and John Lynch, uh, but they did... By making the move for Trey Lance, it bought him some time. It did. It bought him some time. And I think if if they don't have a good season this year, then they're on the hot seat. Then that means they have to go, you know, go all in and win something. Um, I'm still waiting for them to make some sort of a move in free agency. So far, it's crickets. Uh, we kind of figure the the Forge will mainly live in in the second and third wave, but uh, the way they were being linked to so many high priced guys and so many big names, you would think that something would be coming down at some point um john paul says i'm tired of being cheap on back end yes front seven is most important but we need turnovers in the secondary uh seat tart drop okay yeah i, I i'm not going to argue with you i think that you would love to be as good on the the back end as you are up front the problem is is you you have one or two ways to handle it right you can either address it through the draft or free agency and i think they've decided that they're going to draft a lot of times and develop draft and develop they did bring in you know Sorensen, a new defensive uh, secondary coach i know he's going to be a defensive assistant but all the secondary players from seattle were raving about this so i think they did bring him in to help the secondary a little bit that development of some of the young players diameter and Laura Ombre thomas so um let's see not sure why folks are so into trading kittle like yeah it's crazy no i don't get that either I, i'm not i'm not a part of the kittle kittle conversation for being traded especially right now when you would incur a 12 million dollar dead money cap hit no I'm, I'm not about that 
Um, okay, Jan says after Kittle dropped weight, his blocking hasn't been as good. We'll see. I think Kittle dropped weight to try to help his feet and ankles because he was having so much problems there. So sometimes you just have to find a happy medium. You see this happen with Mike McGlinchey in 2020. He dropped a lot of weight to be more fast, um, but then he lost, you know, he struggled a little bit with his physicality. And then all of a sudden you get, um, you know, him putting back on weight. And it seemed like he was playing well, but you wonder if he's going to lose some of that lateral movement. Uh, 427 says, Bosa was the easy pick. A blind person would pick Bosa. Maybe. You know what I mean? I you, you would you would think so. You would think so. 420 Savage. Unfortunately, um, there are people that miss on big time players all the time at the beginning of the draft. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I know the the 49ers missed on Solomon Thomas, but the Bears also traded up to get Mitchell Trubisky. So I mean, there there are people that make misses. I mean, Trent Balky, huge misses in the draft. So I think this is something that a lot of general managers do. Um, I, I don't know the Solomon Thomas one never made sense. The Nick Bosa one was a slam dunk. I think you're right. Um, but I also want to give him credit for just pulling the trigger on it. Um, let's see SL million. I think Jimmy's going to be going to New Orleans or the Steelers with the Steelers signing Trubisky SL million. I don't think that's going to happen. New Orleans is still a possibility. Um, teams are waiting to see what happens with Deshaun. That is yes. Teams are definitely waiting to see what happens with Deshaun. Um, my thing with, I think the Colts are the one that makes the most sense right now because I don't think they're in on Deshaun. I don't think they're waiting on Deshaun. I think they're just waiting out the 49ers. They're hoping the 49ers are going to come down on their asking price. 49ers want two second round picks for them. And it appears the Colts aren't willing to do that. I think the Colts are willing to turn around and almost give them the Carson Wentz kind of deal. But the 49ers are holding out for two twos like they got for Alex Smith in 2013. Um, it's it's smart. I think they probably have a framework. Of course, Jimmy Garoppolo working with the Colts as far as you know what the contract would look like, I think is important. Um, so that's something to watch for sure. Um, Gabriel Clark, not Steelers. They just signed Trubisky. Yeah, there you go. Um, Trubisky is going to the Steelers. Thanks, Luke. Um, 49ers miss Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I think a lot of people miss Patrick Mahomes. There were there were two coaches that were really high on Patrick Mahomes in the first round of that. And that is that was uh, Sean Payton from New Orleans who wanted to come up to get him. And, of course, Andy Reid, who did come up to get him. Uh, the 49ers weren't interested in going rookie quarterback because Kyle Shanahan always intended on bringing in her cousins. He did. That's why he passed on all those guys. He passed on to Sean Watson. He passed on Patrick Mahomes. He always was doing that. Um, realistic pickups in free agency. I think they're going to be middle of the road guys. I really do. I, I don't think they're going to go out and spend a ton of money. I would, I, I hope I'm wrong because I really would love to see Chandler Jones uh, or, you know, or Stefan Gilmore or, or both. Um, but I think you're going to see, you know, like DJ Reed or Tarverius Ward, um, guys like that, you know, AJ Bouye, some people like that in the secondary that can come in and compete. Um, and then as far as I don't think they're going to spend that much money on the offensive line. So, retaining guys might become something that's more important. I think I would hope that they would value going after a Chandler Jones, you know, and a Stefan Gilmore, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't also be surprised though, if they don't bring in a speed receiver. Now I thought they were going to go the cheap route, maybe with like a John Ross, uh, even though we did talk about the fact that Valdez Scantling was somebody that would be interesting for them because he's six foot four and can play in the slot and he can take the top off the defense with that elite speed. To me, he's an option as well. I just think his money is going to be too high. I don't think the 49ers are going to pay that much money for a third wide receiver. If he was going to come in to play second wide receiver, it would make sense. I just don't think that's going to happen. So I think the 49ers are still going to be somewhat interesting and cheap with their money. Uh, that's just kind of how they do it. They're very prudent when it comes to their salary cap. Now, I would love to see them go all in. I keep waiting for Jed York to you know, go full Eddie D and be like, you know what, John, go win a Super Bowl. I don't care what you have to do. Get it done. Uh, maybe at some point he will, but I don't know if that's this year. Um, yeah, I, that's what uh, uh, Luke is saying about Mar uh, about Valdez Scantling. Yeah, exactly. Um, JC, though, get off. The okay, Jay Hill wants everyone to get off the Mahomes talk. Um, yeah, you're right. Niners rarely make splashes in free agency. I think not. They did when they first took over, though. Uh, Jan, you know, when they went out and got McKinnon, they paid big money for. They've gotten Quan Alexander, they paid big money for. They went out and got Richard Sherman. Um, they have made moves, right? Kyle Yushek, those were big splashes. And then since then, it's been about retaining their guys that they got via trade or in the draft. So it just as they've built their rosters, they've drafted good football players, and you have to hold on to those. So sometimes you don't need fo great football players from other teams, but you need to retain your own football players. Um, so I think that's part of it. Um, uh, 
Alex is saying EJ Hunter, possibly McKissick, Gilmore, John Ross, all names to watch. Um, yeah, those are those are possibilities. Uh, they'll draft Christian Watson if he's still there. I think they would draft Christian Watson depending on where they're drafting. I mean, that's that might be part of the reason they're holding out on the Jimmy Garoppolo thing. They might, might want to swap picks, go from 61 to 42, you know, with uh, the Colts. That is a big swap because the value of player you're going to be able to get at that level is tremendous. And those are the kinds of things they're still working out. So I think so. Uh, BV50 says, Ant, do you see a backup quarterback for the 49ers? You know what I did before this, before they signed Nate Sudfeld. Uh, when they gave Sudfeld the $2 million guarantee contract, it made me think that maybe they're just going to roll with Sud. Uh, maybe it's Suddy time as the backup quarterback. Uh, they're very high on Sudfeld. And from what we saw at camp, I mean, he did a pretty good job of leading the football team. So it, it might be him. So I think that is something that happens. Um, but yeah, see, Jan agrees they're staying with Sudfeld. I think that is a possibility. Um, I don't think DJ Chark, EJ, will will be somebody the Niners go for. I think he's going to make a little bit too much money. I kind of look for Chark to end up in with Las Vegas, but I, I don't know for sure. I just don't think so because I think they are trying to work on a, an extension with Jawan Jennings. But I think they would rather go extension with Jawan Jennings than that a speed threat um, that can really light it up. I think the perfect situation would be Brandon Cooks, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get out of Houston. He wants out of Houston. He doesn't look like he's going to be able to. So Valdez Scantling, John Ross, guys like that are players that, you know, keep an eye on that the 49ers could bring because they want someone to take the top off the defense for Lance to be able to get the ball down the field. Um, Trubisky Steelers sound lame. It's SL Million it is completely, he's he's a whole, he's holding his spot. Um, they're going to draft a quarterback and, you know, he's he's that bridge guy. That, that's what's happening there. Um, okay, so BJ Hill just re-signed with the Bengals three years, 30 million. That is a nerve that makes every, that should make everyone nervous about DJ DJ Jones. Uh, the fact that BJ Hill just got thirty million dollars, so te- almost ten million dollars a year, um, that should put the nerves about DJ Jones going elsewhere. So then, you know that that begs the question: What are you going to do on the interior? Is Maurice Hurst that question? You know that answer? They're going to go Kinlaw, Maurice Hurst on the interior. Of course, Mar- Maurice Hurst is a three tech. Uh, DJ Jones is not. So uh, you're you're going to look at maybe a drafting someone so that that is something to keep an eye on of course as we move through free agency um if Seth Pelt comes in for a game he's going to drop dimes you, you know what he he throws he throws the ball pretty good there Luke I mean he really does he, he throws it he throws a nice ball um you we were all kind of you know raving about him coming out of training camp he was fun to watch and he manages the offense pretty good he has a really good understanding I think he has a good relationship with Trey Lance too um Trey Lance can really count on him and he's comfortable and I think Sudfeld is good enough to win you football games, but not good enough to put any pressure on Trey Lance where he has to worry about losing his starting job. So I think he does need to feel somewhat comfortable. Um, uh, Sir Juju says, honestly, we just need a few pieces to make this all work. I truly believe we'll be going deep into the playoffs this season, barring any injuries. I think that's what everyone hopes for. I think that's what everyone's looking to do. Um, I think this is, you know, the, the Lake and Tomlinson moving on, I think adds more questions. You're hoping that, you know, if the 49ers hit it out of the park with Aaron Banks and he slides right in, then there, there's no conversations. I think we're all feeling good about that situation. And over a little over $900,000, uh, that's that's a lot of savings that you can put into other positions. That's why you have to draft well. So you're hoping that happens. If you're drafting well, you're able to bring in big-time players or re-sign your big-time players. We know contract extension for, you know, Debo Samuel's coming, uh, 20 plus million dollars for Debo Samuel per season. you got the Nick Bosa uh contract that's going to be coming you know that's going to be 30 plus million dollars so letting some of these guys go now it doesn't make a lot of sense but maybe it will down the road um john paul says my only question on sudfeld if trey goes down can sud keep us as a super bowl contender a little risky no he can't but the honest the honest fact is uh john paul with your backup quarterback with barring you getting like an elite backup quarterback somebody that can win football games the 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 fact is you're not going to win a super bowl if trey goes out for like the season you know, Sudfeld could keep you in playoff contention, for instance. He can win you a couple games. I think that's what you're looking for from your backup quarterback is somebody that can come in and bridge the gap until Trey Lance comes back. That's all you're trying to do. Um, so I think that that is a, you know, that's a big thing. So we'll see. Um, 420 Savage, Lance will be a superstar. He could be the, the toughest quarterback and best quarterback since Steve Young for the four years. Lance has serious talent. He does. Uh, he has serious talent. So, yeah, it, if the talent meets, you know what he's what he's figuring out and and learning, he's going to be unbelievable. So I think that is that is something that we're all going to be excited about. Trey Lance is going to definitely be fun to watch. Uh, four twenty seven says would love Chandler Jones. Yeah, I think that's a consensus. 
I, I think from everyone we've heard, you know, Chandler Jones is one of those guys that everyone's excited about. So I think Chandler Jones definitely could be somebody that, you know, the 49ers are interested in. We'll see. We'll see what his market is. Um, no, 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 no. Jan, I don't think I don't think he's saying Ayuk wants out. He's he's saying that uh Brandon Cooks wants out. Um that that's what he's talking about. Ayuk does not want out. I don't think that's what Jay Hill was saying. Um yeah, he was commenting on me saying Brandon Cooks wants out. Yeah, nothing to do with Brand with Brandon Ayuk wanting out. So if there was a confusion there, sorry, Jan. Um Stephon Gilmore, a one year deal to go with all it would be the best free agent I would want. Oh, SL, I think that with Stefan Gilmore, it's going to take more than a one-year deal. And he's going to want a two- or three-year deal. And it would make sense if you're bringing him for to San Francisco, for instance, to give him a three-year deal, for instance, because then you can spread out his money, keep his base salary lower this year. As it goes, as the salary cap goes up, um, his money could go up. Plus, if you if you work it the right way, his money could be coming off the books just as Bosa's big money or Debo Samuel's big money kick in. So you don't really have that that cap space that you know that really hurts you. Um, yeah, no, Ayuk is good. Ayuk is going to be good with Trey. He's excited about getting the deep ball. I don't think that is that was coming coming through on that. So, um, but when it comes to Lake and Tomlinson, I know we've been going off on the other free agents, but let me bring it back to Lake and Tomlinson. Um, now that he's gone and the 49ers have some decisions, you know, it, it's it's going to be fun on the interior offensive line because um, there's been a lot of talk this off season about Aaron Banks. Uh, is Aaron Banks going to be ready? Well, we're not going to have to wait much longer. Aaron Banks is going to have to go out there and, and compete. So I, I think that Aaron Banks right now would be the odds-on favorite to be slotted in as the, the left guard. But I think they'll bring Daniel Brunskill and Tom Compton back. And if they do, he'll have to compete for that spot. Um, so we'll we'll see what this offensive line ultimately looks like in front of Trey Lance. Um, but yeah, anyone that has any more questions, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of leave it open. And then, um, once you guys, uh, comment a little bit more, I'm going to hop off. So I'm going to be on for about, you know, five more minutes. So if you got questions or anything, you know, just drop them in there and we can talk about anything free agency before I hop off. Um, but I'm excited about, you know, the opportunities for the 49ers having free agency. Um, I'm not ultimately too worried about the Jimmy Garoppolo thing yet. Uh, talk to me on Wednesday and then I'll let you know, you know, how worried, how worried I am when we get closer to Wednesday, because, I, I want to believe that some of the stuff um, that they're saying about waiting till training camp is posturing. That's really what I want to say. I want to say it's posturing, but just don't know for sure. I just don't know for sure. So, um, but that, that would be my thought. Is there like, you know, okay, we'll just wait till training camp, you know, and these guys want to get players in. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about the 49ers prospects. Uh, what does anyone think about Zadarius Smith? Uh, since the Packers released Zadarius Smith, is anyone interested in Zadarius Smith coming to the 49ers? I don't know what his number would look like. He couldn't reach an agreement with Green Bay. Um, so that's it. Also, there are some offensive linemen, if you guys want to go back and check out our offensive line video, um, that are on other rosters that are cheap options that might be coming. Uh, any word on Famous? No, I haven't heard anything, uh, Jay Ellie. The one thing I saw was that he was, Jameis Winston has been recovering from the injury. He's been running again running on the treadmill and stuff. So that is a good sign for um, Jameis Winston. I think Jameis Winston is in the mix, um, you know, to be one of the guys that's, uh, um, you know, a starter in New Orleans. I really do. I think he could be the starter in New Orleans, but I think they're going to go in on Watson. If they get Watson, then Jameis is without a team. So I think that's what's going on there. Um, Luke Luna says, the bank's going to ball. I've just had a feeling more will be ready to take over for a Trent possibly at year three mark in the contract. We'll see. Uh, the one thing we know with Jalen Moore is he needs to. It, it's funny because Banks and Moore are kind of like polar opposites. Where Banks needs to improve his lateral movement and pass blocking, and then you got Jalen Moore who needs to improve in his run blocking. That's the reason he didn't start over Colton McKivitz. His run blocking wasn't good enough. The Four Years offense is based off that run game, so um, I think that is something to to keep in mind. Um, Sergio just says, in the event Jimmy doesn't get traded due to teams not wanting him, what then? Do you just cut him and save money? I think you can. Yeah, I think you can. You you weigh it out. You know, so, I mean, you would think at some point, right, if they were interested in Jimmy Garoppolo, they'll still have interest. It just might not be the deal that you're willing to get. But I don't think the Colts are going in with a rookie quarterback. Um, are they going to, and that's what I said, are they going to turn around and tell their fan base it's going to be Jameis Winston? I don't think so. So, um, I, I don't I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think they've been burned by the, you know, the quarterbacks that they've brought in recently and it just hasn't worked out for them. They need a different style of quarterback. So um, that's what's going to happen. Uh, BV, that's the state of the NFL. Having a lack of quality backup quarterbacks, what can a team make it to the Super Bowl with a backup? They're exactly right. 
Um, you can barely make it to the, to the Super Bowl with a, a a above average starting quarterback. So you know the days of Hostetler and you know and those guys getting you to the Super Bowl. Eh, I don't think so. Um, my biggest question addressing backup quarterback. Um, Carson, do you think they're still going to address backup quarterback? I don't know. I think they might think they already did it with Nate Sudfeld. Uh, before this, I thought, you know, Tyrod Taylor um, was it somebody that I was interested in possibly bringing in. Of course, everyone talked about Marcus Mariota, but I don't know if they were willing to pay for $5 million for a backup quarterback. You know, they had Sudfeld. He already had is in that room. He's already been in Trey Lance's ear, uh, helping Trey Lance get better. Um, and also, he doesn't put any pressure on Trey Lance to, you know, about being a starting quarterback. I think you can feel comfortable that studies there for him and his backup. So I don't know if they're going to go another way, but I, I get what you're saying for sure. Addressing the backup quarterback situation has been something that I think has been on our mind ever since we found out they were going to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, wow. Uh, Frank Stomp said Christian Kirk is getting 17 million a year from the Jags. Yeah. I and mean, this is, this is the thing I'm worried about with Debo Samuel. Uh, Debo Samuel's money just went up to what? $25 million a year. Uh, that it's insane. So I don't, I don't know if they're going to be able to get, his deal done this year or not they might have to franchise him next year i don't know uh it's about to be crazy um yeah 420 savage says tyron matthew the safety from kc would be good for us he would it's just what's his money going to be the one thing about the honey badger he wants money um and so it's going to all be about that i mean as a player that he's an elite talent but for money wise i don't know if he fits what the niners are going to do um Big Hex says, hearing that we may keep Jimmy till training camp sounds so depressing. You're right. It really does. I mean, I think everyone's ready to move on. And I, I to be honest with you, I, I think everyone wants to use that draft capital. You know, everyone wants that draft capital available because, you know, the 40 yards gave up so much to get Trey Lance that, you, you know, having another second round pick or third round pick, whatever, that you could use to kind of move around. There's some some good players in that second, third and fourth round that you would love to have on your team that could have an impact. And, you know, you got to keep building through the draft. You can't do it, you know, all through free agency. So I think people would like that, but, um, you know, I just don't know. I, I don't think they're going to wait till training camp. I think that's posturing. I think it is going to happen. It would happen definitely before the draft. But, I mean, at what point do the 49ers, you know, would they press it to the draft? I don't know. I, I don't think one of these other teams want to wait, but the fact that Jimmy Garoppolo has surgery – uh, one of these teams might be inclined to wait. You know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I still think it's the 49ers and Colts that end up getting something done, but we'll see. We'll see if they can actually get it done. I noticed we are going smaller at the O-line position, perhaps in mobility, pulling, run blocking. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Banks is Banks is big. I mean, Banks was over 330 pounds when they drafted him, so he's no small guy at all. Um, You, you put in the fact that, you know, with uh, Mike McGlinchey, Mike McGlinchey got back over 320 pounds again, so he's really big as well. Um, so those guys are big. I think Moore can put more weight on his frame. Trent Williams is huge. Uh, but I think they want as much size as they can get to couple with the mobility on the offensive line. That's what they're trying to do. Um, but you're right. More mobile guys fit the scheme. You know, you outside zone, you know, the stretch run plays that they like to run. Those are important. And yeah, you're right. When they run their gap scheme and they want to pull, it, it makes sense to have guys who are very mobile. That's what fits Kyle Shanahan's scheme. So that's why when you're looking at draft picks, anyone that can't move or anyone that's Six foot eight, you know, 380 pounds. Uh, it doesn't move well. They're just not fit. So um, those aren't going to be guys, you know, the, the 49ers are not getting Daniel Falele, for instance. He doesn't fit the scheme. So um, that is easy. Uh, BV50 says, can they can they structure Debo's contract? They could structure it a certain way, right? If they re-sign, uh, they sign him to an extension, they could definitely make his cap number low now and push the money down the line as the salary cap continues to expand. The problem is at what point... Is it going to be just so outrageous? Now, uh, Parag Marathi is one of the best ones about setting it up so there's like a way out in the contract, like halfway through. Like Trent Williams is basically like two, three-year deals. Um, so once you opt into that second half, you know you're paying the big money, but you could restructure or re-extend him at that point. And I think that's what he's going to do with Debo's contract, build it in. You're not completely on the hook for all of that, but it's going to be interesting. And I think his deal will happen closer to training camp uh, just reading the way the 40 ers handled business in the past, you know, George Kittle right before training camp, uh, Fred Warner before training camp. So I think if Debo Samuels was going to happen, it'd be closer to training camp time when they work out an extension. And of course, they plan on working out extension for uh, Nick Bosa as well. I don't know if that'll happen this offseason or next offseason. In May, I believe it's May 8th, they have to decide if they're going to exercise the fifth year option on Nick Bosa. Um, so they will for sure do that if they don't have a contract extension in place. 
but uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. Luke Luna says Debo's on a rookie deal, and we don't have to work out a deal with him this year. Um, but the money will go up a little bit next year. Same with Bosa. Yeah, with with uh, Debo Samuel, Luke. If they don't get him under contract, then next year they would they would more than likely have to um, give him the franchise tag because you can't let this guy go out and test free agency. You would get priced out. Somebody would m overpay, and Mike McDaniel with Miami, for instance, would just give this guy way too much money. So uh, that's the only option. Do you sign him to an extension or you franchise tag him next year? Because because he was a second round pick, you don't have a fifth year option on him. So I think that that is something to keep in mind too as we watch the contract um, talks between Debo Samuel and the 49ers is the fallback plan is franchise tag. And the way that the, the receivers are pay getting paid, that contract is going up and up and up, uh, even in the franchise tag. Because it's, you know, it's, an, it's an average of those contracts that set the, the number. So... It's going to get bigger and bigger for Debo. So I think the Forge are going to want to get this thing done sooner rather than later and, you know, stay away from having to pay him 28 to $30 million. Um, but it's it's one of those things that the money is crazy. You're hoping the salary cap continues to go up as we get farther and farther away from 2020 and all the, the money that the owners lost and the players lost because of, you know, the COVID-19 and, and all the stuff that happened with no fans in the stands. So, um but since it slowed down a little bit, guys, I thank everyone for coming through. We're going to be checking in all throughout the day as more news breaks. But if you just joined in late, I'll just let you know, Lakin Tomlinson has signed with the Jets. He got a three-year deal worth over $40 million to go to the Jets. 40 yards definitely got priced out. It appears Aaron Banks is the heir apparent. Will they make another move? I don't know. If they do, though, I'll hop back on and, and start talking to you guys. Hope you guys are having a great Monday. Looking forward to more conversations. And I am out.